We are with Sonia Loman. And you're talking to the audience that just had a chance to see Teach Us All. If they haven't just seen it live at our event at the African American Museum, they saw it just now. They, they just switched off of Netflix and now they're over here watching. My mother used to tell me when I was coming up, she was like, Bradley, your two strikes. One you a male and one you black. Ain't nobody gonna ever give you nothing for that. I was glad I had on those sunglasses. At least some people would not see me crying. Millions and millions of black and Latino kids will go through a public education system that does not educate them. Ineffective teacher after ineffective teacher, of which you have no control over, eventually just builds up and you become a lost student in the system. We're one of the few countries in the world that systematically and deliberately spends less money to educate poor children than affluent children. My mom, she makes about $9,000 a year. It's five of us. So you can imagine what we have to go through to survive. Thank you for joining us. How did this come about? How did you become involved in this, in this particular issue? And, and how did the film get made? What was the process of it getting made? So I um, started working for an educational nonprofit about now three or four years ago. Um, after doing international work and um, being very focused on global issues. Um, and so I started to learn about education and the sort of the centrality of that to the social progress in this country. I started to really become aware of the huge inequities in our system and, and the um, ways that that's sort of marginalizing and um, disenfranchising a huge number of our youth. Um, uh, not adequately preparing them to sort of fully participate um, and get the benefits of our society. So um, I started to recognize sort of the urgency of this um, and gain an appreciation for, for the role of education in our society. Um, and then, you know, the organization I work for, the Lowell Milken Center for Unsung Heroes, is very focused on um, history and, and demonstrating the continued relevance of history to um, young people's lives today. So we were doing a museum and just a lot of work on the Little Rock Nine and, and, um, and that's how I started thinking about how we were coming up on the 60th anniversary of the Little Rock school desegregation crisis. And um, I learned about a state takeover of the Little Rock School District um, and how that was a very divisive, um, very kind of controversial thing and that really showed the continued Fracture, fractures in the community, um, largely along racial lines because of the history there. And um, so I just started thinking about how far we haven't come, um, learning about the resegregation of our schools and thought that this would be a perfect time to really try to elevate that conversation and underscore the urgency that our schools are resegregating, um, the inequality are growing. Uh, more and more acute, um, and that we are really at risk of losing a lot of the gains of the civil rights movement, you know, if we don't connect with that history and activate today's young people to really carry forth um, that fight, you know. No, I mean, and, and you did a fabulous job. I mean, this is your first feature film. First anything film. <laughs> <laughs> Are you interested in making films, or how did this? I mean, this like kind of, like everybody like studies and goes to film school and stuff. I mean, what? Just... I love. I mean, I love film for sure. Um, I definitely appreciate the medium, and I was, and I am interested in film making. Um, but this one, I guess, came about more because of the topic and the idea of a, doing an impact film. Um, again, sort of organizing a movement around the 60th anniversary and the film being a tool for the campaign. Because um, I recognize that film can bring people together to talk about issues. Um, and we want people to come together to talk about these issues and, and how they impact their local communities. But we also want people to come together to build solutions, because um, the solutions are really going to be forged at the community level for the most part. Um, and so I. I, yeah, I, I mean, I love film. Your background was, <laughs> my background was not in world? film. You were making films for this organization prior? No, um, no, my background is communications and um, international relations and policy work and stuff. So, um, but I'm a writer and I love storytelling. Right, so what school? <laughs> I went to yeah, I went to London School of Economics for graduate school for but international relations and. Um, was very passionate about international women's rights, and that was where a lot of my work was. And 
Um, but again, the focus on global issues, you know, kind of somewhat ignorant of, of things here in the U.S. And, um, you know, there's so many problems in Africa and the Middle East, and I was very focused on that. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> we have a lot of problems here right at home. And that kind of gave me a whole new sense of purpose because it's much more tangible when you can sort of work on issues that are kind of right in your backyard. And, um, and, and put a human face on it, you know, which is what's, what's great. I mean, you're, you're, you're meeting firsthand and seeing firsthand the inequities. I mean, were, were there any surprise? I mean, now you've done the research. I guess the first stop was Little Rock yeah. to make the film. I mean, yeah. So how did, how did that go? And then tracking down the people that were that were part of the nine that were was that a difficult process? Um, we got really lucky with Elizabeth Eckford because of a relationship our organization has with her due to a student project, um, a student who contacted Elizabeth in the late '90s um, about you know really asking her if there were any white students that were kind to her that year, that you know, horrible, horrible year. Um, and she said that there was actually a student named Ken Reinhardt, um, a white boy who was very kind to the Little Rock Nine and he stood up for them and he, as a result, he was beaten up and he was, you know, got death threats and, you know, like glass thrown in the shower, all sorts of things. Um, but, you know, but he kept sort of standing up for them. And so she hadn't seen him since 1957 um, and she mentioned this to the student in Kansas and the student went and tracked down Ken and reunited Ken and Elizabeth um, in the late 90s and it was this, you know obviously very emotional reunification and they started traveling across the country to talk about discrimination and bias and standing up for what's right and and so that's one of the the lessons we really use we, we work with at the Lowell Milken Center is um, you know the power of standing up when you see something that's wrong you know don't put your head down and just try to you know ignore it but really you have to stand up for for that um, and, and you have to stand up for people who um, are being wronged so so that was how we had the relationship with Elizabeth which is a very lucky kind of rare interview um, and then I reached out to Terrence Roberts myself because he's in LA and um, I, th I think I tried to track down some of the others and never it wasn't very lucky <laughs> it's such yeah, hard. I mean it's one of the things like I, I was excited when Ray announced it that we, that we had it mm -hmm. you know I, there have been countless films mm -hmm. about that situation mm -hmm. specifically Little Rock Nine mm -hmm. Ernest Green story was a TV movie and mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, Guggenheim had done a short film mm -hmm. from Little Rock and, mm -hmm. and then even HBO had like, on the 50th anniversary yeah. they, they did a film you know so there I guess there's a lot of material that, that exists I mean what was what was your approach in terms of organizing your information yeah so I you know I, I that was a large part of why I did the case studies in New York and LA as well um, because I w felt very strongly that if this was going to be a campaign piece um, we really needed to m make it feel relevant to the whole country um, and my personal feeling was that it would be harder for students in especially in urban centers to you know like a Detroit or a Chicago or something like that to really connect with the story of Little Rock, um, me being from the West Coast and living on the East Coast, knowing that we tend to dismiss racism as a Southern issue um, and sort of pretend it doesn't happen in our own cities and stuff. Um, so I felt very strongly that, you know, I didn't want to just, just make Little Rock 60 years later, but this part of the film of we are all Little Rock, um, this is a microcosm, this is happening everywhere in our communities. Um, these divisions, the seg segregation, this separation, this not knowing one another, um, and this putting our kids in these situations where they're not knowing one another and we're turning a blind eye to egregious inequalities. Um, so, I w you know, from a filmmaking standpoint, from an inexperienced filmmaker, <laughs> um, I know it was a little bit more of a messy of a structure to sort of be jumping into these different cities. I, some people told me that was not the way to do it. Um, but for me, I wanted it to feel like we could all um, see ourselves in this story because it really affects every single one of us. Oh, know. absolutely. And then when you put the numbers there, you know, over time, I mean, it, it definitely reinforces mm -hmm. people's sort of like, I wouldn't say common knowledge, but pre-existing perception. 
mm-hmm. you know. But then, but then you also investigate even deeper, you know, within the root of it. Mm-hmm. You know? So, and it does seem to me, what you know, that a lot of a lot of where we are now is a reaction to all those gains that happened in the mid late fifties and mid sixties, mm-hmm. um, leading up to the Civil Rights Act. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I mean, I mean, can you speak to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, there was huge resistance to desegregation. Um, you know, that was a large part of why, kind of quote unquote, white flight happened. Um, you know, just looking at Little Rock itself. Um, you know, I'm, I briefly cover the lost year in um, in the film, and that was the year after the Little Rock Nine desegregated and um, the governor shut down all the schools, but what happened is that they started opening private schools um, with public taxpayer money, private schools for white students. And so that trend of pulling you know, white kids in particular, or more affluent kids, out of the public school system, sort of divesting from the public school system and creating this sort of ring of, of um, white or, or more affluent um, schools really started as a reaction, you know, started pulling kids out. And that was, um, you know, it's a trend that we still see today, unfortunately, and the repercussions of that today. Um, and so while there was marked progress in the 60s and 70s because of the mandate of Brown versus Board of Education in the South, there was still a number of these sort of, you know, alternative forms of education, public, and now we, you know, I mean, private, and now we see it in charters, um, really as a resistance to, to desegregating our schools. There's a perception that, you know, you know, in order for your child to even have a chance at making it, you've got to pay for their education. Mm-hmm. But you're saying that, no, they even changed the laws mm-hmm. to enforce this type of, this, uh, this second class system. Well, they they stopped enforcing the law I, in terms of changing the laws. I mean, there's not there's it's not legal to segregate in any way. But um, they just started stopped enforcing the desegregation um, strictly de facto. So now it's happening because of the yeah more largely because of the way that we um, have arranged our our neighborhoods and. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what can people that are watching it who have just seen Teach Us All and, and, and now we're watching you, what, what, what instructions? Give us some mar- marching orders. After we see this film, what can we do to help make a change? Yeah, well, I think, um, as you point, rightly point out, um, you know, the gaps are widening. I think the first thing we have to do is to start working together. We need to start listening to one another um, and listening to opinions that might be different. Um, This is an issue that affects, like I've said, every single one of us. um, And we're not going to, unfortunately, education has gotten so politicized and so divisive um, that we really need to sort of rescue this movement from the echo chambers of politics. And we need to put it back into classrooms and we in black into communities. and we really need students and teachers to be consulted and to be helping to lead this movement because um, they are the ones whose lives are most directly impacted by educational policies and yet they're hardly ever consulted um, and certainly not you know, shaping policies. So um, th- I think the, one of the most important things we can do is really try to um, shore up student leadership in this movement. And we've developed a social action curriculum in partnership um, with Integrate NYC for me, um, that is at www.teachusallfilm.org, um, and it's an incredibly powerful um, curriculum to give give students a number of ways that they can do action projects in their community um, and start to impact this movement directly. Um, and the more we have students doing these action projects in their communities, the more that will really build momentum for the, for the national movement and start to shift the tide on this issue. Um, and I really, really believe in the power of students if we, if we would listen to them, if we would talk to them, especially those who are most marginalized to the system. You know, they deserve a voice um, and, and their lives are at stake here. So we need to give that to them. Fantastic. No, so no, I would say you're not dreaming. There is a problem with the system, but it's time to wake up. And I think your film helps to do that. And I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be with us. Thank you for your support.
Hi, I'm Sonia Lohman, the director of Teach Us All, and you're watching Real Black. Wow, you nailed that. Thank you. A plus.